I'm pushing live. You're live. Hey, live. How is everyone? We have a dislike already and they haven't even started. Yay! So it must mean somebody's on the email list specifically to put a dislike up. Yay! <laughs> How are you all? Are you all doing marvelously well? It's 10.31, it just turned over. Ah, Eric, almost, almost to 10.30 start. <laughs> How are you all? <clears throat> yes, please hit the like button, that would be lovely. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, but I imagine most of you here have. Dave, Todd, Anita, Daniel, Trollstern, Blue Wave Dave, Clay, Bobby, Adrienne, Julianne, hey Julianne, Benji, CJ, Devon, Malcolm, uh, Pitty Clay, Martin, Anita, Sonny, Stephen, Dave, Merkel, Sheila, CJ, Sir Egbert Fartalot, uh, The Man, The Mystery, um, The Mystery School, Aaron, JP, Danny, Ray, Aegeus Ban, Andrew, Necrodogs. Wow. Hello, is everybody? How are you? Yes, please hit that like button. That would be lovely. Some people's kids. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kip, Toilet Tunes. Scott, hello. Jethro. Tyson, David, Turgle. Wow. Studio Craft. Jeff, Rob, Crispy, David, blah, blah, blah. Alex, I can't keep up. White Sea. Boo. <laughs> Dustin, Morton, Darren, Eric. All right. So look, we're picking up where we left off. And where do we leave off the other day? Where we were mixing two sets of uh, drums recorded at the same time. The, there is also a video as well. So, um, Eric, can you put the video link um, to the breakdown? Because I did another breakdown using all the drums and going through this. Yeah. And so we can p give you a link not only to down the multitracks, but also to that original video, which I think you should check out. So now we'll have three videos on this subject of these drums. And I think it's a big deal. I think that, you know, I think being able to compare, um, you know, massively expensive setups with very affordable setups is a huge deal because it gives us a perspective of why you may or may not need to spend a lot of money and why you may or may not need to go to a studio. Um, and we all know that given a good set of ears and a great work ethic, you can make music sound amazing with any gear because it's been proven time after time after time that that is really all you need. Because some of the best records in the world were made in some of the best studios and some were made in the most ridiculously cheap environments. And the only correlation is talent and persistent and hard work and creativity. Creativity is king. All right, so, oh yes, please like and share, says Crispy. That would be amazing, yes, please hit the like. Hello, Prince. Uh, thank you very much. Necro Dogs, Jim, Yuba, hey, Team Banzai, woo, woo to you, Alessandro, Lisa, hello Lisa. So this is going to be rather fun. So please hit that like button. Bear with me, um, like in Berlin, uh, King Belzy, Anita, hello. All right, let's create some rock and roll history. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where we left off. Where did we leave off? Here it is. So this was, um, just as a quick recap, it's the DTP 640 Rex kick drum mic. We used uh, a, a CLA 76 on it, so, and then a Sheps. And then we had a Sheps on the snare top. We only have a snare top. And then we had the, um, a rack and a floor, a hi-hat, overheads, and rooms. And basically, we used a lot of stock EQs, like this, good old fashioned stock EQs. We put a reverb on the room to make it uh, bigger. So let's give it a listen and then we'll recap and see where we are at. Okay, we're pressing play. I'm gonna go to the outro where it gets a bit crazier.
happy with that. I mean, that's, you know, that's the Lewitt drum package. So it's all affordable mics. Um, you know, it's not the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest mics on the, on the market. We did do that with a Shure drum package because um, this is not specifically about Lewitt. Do, do I love Lewitt? Do I think they're amazing value for money? Heck yes. And I've been championing them from the start and it's no accident that they're selling really well because they're freaking awesome. But... We did do a very similar shootout like this with the Shure drum package, which I believe was even cheaper still. It was like 600 bucks. So there's, there's kind of a point is that inexpensive mics with a good drummer and in a good room, you know, with a great performance, you know, a great drummer playing really well with well-tuned drums is going to sound fantastic. And this went through an audience. I believe it was a combination of like a, a little ID... It was not the ID44, it was the smaller one with the ASP800. So it was a pretty basic setup. Um, you know, not the cheapest, but then not expensive, not compared with the really expensive Sunset console. Now, a lot of you mentioned the kick. Yeah, the kick is pretty special. So the kick is the DTP640 Rex. And what we did, and I think is a big game changer, and, and kudos to Andrew Sheps, is the Sheps Omni channel. We do have a little bit of a Lem76 going on here. Um, but I'd be intrigued to see, you know, how much of that, that, that CLA-76 is really doing. I mean, for instance, we could come in, why don't we just for the heck of it, because um, just what I picked, use a, um, comes free with Pro Tools, a bomb factory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this and I'm going to match the settings. So we're going to use a bomb factory, because I really think most of what we're hearing is coming from that... Omni channel. So I'm actually going to turn off the CL76 and have a listen. So I actually like the CL76 seems to, it's interesting, it reads like it's doing more compression, but it doesn't sound like it's doing more compression. So I actually think that there's less compression going on on this setting here. Never compared these two, so this is the first time I've ever compared. It says it's giving us 3 dB worth of compression. Let's have a listen to this. I tell you what's going on is the release time on the um, on the BF76 is not as fast, not as fast. So it it seems like they've they've sped up the release time on the CL76 is actually faster than a, than an actual 1176, which is interesting. So we'll stick with that. Okay. Now the Sheps obviously is where. Uh, a lot of this magic is happening. So I'll recap on that. I think it's worth it because, like everybody's pointing out, it does sound great. <clears throat> Clay says, any thoughts, tips for getting a massive drum sound without it being too much? Um, I think that's sort of what we're doing here. I mean, if you've got, if you've got room mics, um, if you've got room mics or you've got overheads or something, you know, you can feed that into an artificial room and create a big drum sound. I mean, really, big drum sound is room. It's a room tone with a lot of body on your drums, you know, like a big, fat, huge kick like we've got here. Like, you know, we can go through it. That's what's going to give you it, Clay. It's like, um, for instance, I've got a video coming out in a few days with drums recorded in a stairwell of a castle. Watch out for that. It's going to be phenomenal. And the sound of the drums in the stairwell of the castle is why the drums sound so big. It is absolutely massive in there. You can't do anything about it. So if you want a big roomy drum sound, then you're either going to go into a big room or you're going to create it artificially using reverb. The other thing is, is like, the, we're not using any drum samples on this, but if you've got very small drums and you can't make them sound big, then, you know, you can be as much of a purist as you like, but if you want a massive drum sound and you've got tiny little beep, 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 that's where you have to use drum samples. You can, there's only so much you can do. The, the way I look at it is it's all about understanding every single option that you've got to make great drums 
understand everyone and use whatever you need to get it. I do believe very strongly that if you start with a live drum performance and you get that as good as you can sounding, then if you have to add some samples against it, you're going to get the best results. If you rely very heavily on the samples, <coughs> you'll end up with something which sounds very do de do 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 de do 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 And I get stuff all the time <coughs> sent to me or people send me mixes and I'm like, is this a real drummer? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's a real drummer. And I'm like, yeah, but you, it literally just sounds sample, 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 sample. If you're going to be forced to use samples, blend them in, start with them off and then bring them in subtly and find that place where you can inherently keep the original sound of the kick with the sample kick and make it make sense. Um, however, I don't think in this instance with these microphones and this Audient IO that we need to. I think that these drums sound fantastic. Um, and so getting back, sorry, Clay, I'm going to get back now. The Omni channel is doing a lot of that. Let's turn the Omni channel off the kick and on and let's see what the difference is. So here it is off. The first huge difference you, you feel is that thump down here. It's a big deal. I will say, in its defense, the Rex is a pretty amazing sounding mic. It's really, really incredible sounding. Now, it has two sides to it. You have one side, um, you have one side that gives you, you know, um, you know, one side that gives you, um, a lot of top and one side that gives you more bottom end. So we did feature that side because there's a condenser side and a dynamic side. Um, if you want, you can blend the two things together, which is of course what a lot of people do. Um, okay, so um, now with the, with the thump, it's a huge deal. I think that's really, really adding some stuff. Plus we did a bit of saturation here. The saturation, um, and it's not a lot, but a little bit, is almost like having a, a, a really fancy old compressor or some fancy old gear, because it's it's sort of screwing things up in a really nice way. It's just adding some, some odd harmonics and just making things a little wrong, which is quite frankly what happens when you start putting it through a lot of this old expensive equipment. It starts wrongerizing, randomizing it, adding like little, you know, extra harmonics and, and some, some body from a transformer. And I think a combination of the saturation and the thump there on this pre is huge. It is really, really huge. Um, we did originally start off on a 2 dB thump, but the 4 dB seemed to really do it. Then we put a gate on there just to get rid of some of that bleed, just a bit of the cymbals and stuff and, and the snare bleed. And it was subtle, it didn't need much, but we did do it. Didn't use the de it's a nice tool, but we didn't use it. The EQ is cutting quite a decent amount, 7.7, .7, you can see it here, 7.7 .7, um, of 350. Now Andrew did a very smart thing. He took the most common frequency that we cut, 350 hertz, and made it a default on this EQ. I like this a lot. He literally just was like, he just made it so it was dumb. Like open it up, here's the EQ points, this makes sense. Then his compressor, the ratio, um, works immediately. I didn't adjust the release, I just brought it in and wow, it sounded great. So it's a really, really good sounding plugin. However, the kick drum mic sounds pretty good. Here's just a mic with nothing on it. It's a pretty darn good mic. Now it's put in the uh, um, 76 and the Omnis channel. Nice. And we got the gate length just enough, just enough so that the release time that it allows a oh, oh. One of the things that happens when you're using like, you know, a big kick like that and you end up um, having, you've got to get that gate just so it gets enough of the ooh air on the kick. Because to me, that's what gives it the bottom sound, the oh. All right, fantastic. All right, so let's keep listening. Now the snare. We went just back to the Omni channels. Have a listen. Now, 
I'll let you hear that again. But you can tell the main thing it's doing is adding a lot of body. Let's turn it on. Body and snap. So what are we doing? Here, we've got 220, which is a classic Neve frequency. Just that 220, just that. And, and it's probably got about 6 dBs on it. Yeah, 6 dB, 6.9. So 6 dB at 220. And then on the top, we've got 8K and we're cranking it. And then here, we've got about 3K. So what we've done is we've done this sort of low mid bump at 220 and then this sort of 3K and above slope up on the snare. And we've got between, you know, one to three dB worth of compression. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. We do lots of these live ones and we also do tons of other stuff. And we've got some really cool drum stuff coming out soon. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, um, and then we have our toms, which we did a lot of a lot of EQ to to get them to cut. So we cut a lot of low mids, a lot of this kind of thick. Ugh. We take off all the EQ, you'll hear that they're, they still sound good because they're well-tuned toms, they're well-performed, but there's a lot of low mid thickness in there. They both are going and they're, they're muddy. They're muddy and you put this back in, the EQ. So the EQs are pretty similar on this. It's really this, cut out the low mids, boost the bottom end. And that's very, very typical on, and it, it, it depends on the drum. You see here the floor, first floor, and second floor needing more low mid cut. And that's just, oh, that ugly. Thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed the toms. Um, and then the hat, I didn't do anything to. Now what we decided is on, in the end of a final mix, what we would do on the hat is actually volume ride it and pick up some moments because sometimes it feels too loud and sometimes it's not loud enough. So instead of like sitting there trying to figure out how you can do that with the use of plugins, which is really foolish, sometimes you just need to run some automation. We haven't done that yet because we're not mixing the full band. Um, so. trick we could do, which might be interesting, is to put a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of um, um, saturation or distortion on it, just a tiny amount, just to soak up some of those transients. So I suppose we could go to um, the Klanghelm. Big fan of this plugin. It's like 27 bucks. I still think it's $27. And just have a listen. I like what it immediately did there on the snare, just catching those there. So I just brought in a tiny amount of compression. Now let's drive it a little bit.
like what that's doing. So it's got a tiny, it, see the drive, the, what I like about the MJUC is the drive on it is very, very subtle. And one of the beautiful, beautiful things about the drive is it doesn't just grab the high end and go, it, it seems, I don't know what this guy did, he's amazing, Klanghelm, which those of you that are German, you know, means sound helmet. Um, what, what, he, what he's done is he's created this kind of drive which evenly seems to grab everything and not just push up the high mids and everything and make those painful. It's a really, really tasty compressor and, um, and frankly, you know, analog emulation. And there's many, in this version, if you get the $27 one, it's actually got three different ones. There's a Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III. And you'll probably rec recognize that from being like looking like a Gates, so it's modeled probably on a Gates. Um, this looks more Altec to me, and the Mark I, I'm not sure what it is. But the point is, they all sound great. And that's working. Have a listen to the hat with it, with it on and off. I love what it's doing. I'm just going to crank that up slightly. And this is where you're really going to notice it, because it, it tucks the snare in nicely. If anything, it's adding to the snare. It's very subtle, and maybe in the wonderful world of YouTube, these subtleties aren't really translating. But what it's doing is it's just ducking in the transients of those snares when and you can see the compressor coming on. Driving it ever so slightly, so taking away a little bit of the harshness on the top, which I like. I don't want my hi-hat to be like super jazz funk and pss, 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 pss. I like it to be I like to have that girth in there. So I don't want this sort of little super tiny That's not what I'm into. You know, I'm not into that kind of fiddliness. I like ah, some like, you know, schnazzle, some some what are they called? Uh, how do you pronounce it? Oh, huevos. Huevos! I want some huevos! There you go. <laughs> okay, the overheads, um, as you probably know, have all recorded and mixed with no compression. There's no compression on these overheads whatsoever. Um, and all I did was, because nothing going in from these mics had any kind of compression. So the only compression that's been applied now is a little bit on this hat, more for coloration and to duck in those snares, just a bit. And some basically on the kick and the snare. That's the only compression that's been applied on the whole mix. So which is really interesting. Now, here on the overheads, I'm ducking a crazy amount of 350 out. Ducking out and then high passing or low cutting um, at about 100 and just pulling that out. So pulling out low mids there and that just makes it, it's definitely a lot nicer on those toms. If you have a listen here, the toms are a lot more flattered with it. that back in it's like ho 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 it's this ugliness in the toms listen to how ugly it is on the toms the other thing that's really really important is using high passing properly um, low passing yeah, I'm sorry low cutting and high passing allows the bottom end that is there to breathe more effectively if you've got tons and tons of things all fighting for the same low end, you've got all these waveforms which are like this, all slightly offset with each other, and it turns into mud. It doesn't, all the clarity's lost, there's no tight low end, it's just a big set of mud. So pretty tasty. I like it. Now what do we have? Now we have the room mics. And what is our giveaway today, Eric? We are giving away three. We're giving away three uh, recording drums with Matt White. Are we doing Matt White?
Weiss, Recording Drums with Matt Weiss. We're giving away three copies of free of Recording Drums with Matt Weiss. Matt Weiss, who's recently um, uh, been featured, who has recently been featured um, with Slate. Slate's gone and uh, poached him from uh, Pro Audio Files and using him over there. Um, so um, you can check him out over there now. Um, but he did a, a drum recording course with us. And so you can see Matt Weiss's techniques on drum recording. And we have three copies of that to give away. So we'll do our first one now. And at the end, if you stick around to the end, we're also giving away, away a one-year membership to the um, Academy, the PLAP Academy. And the other th great thing is, is not only... Um, if you've already a member, I should say, you can also get a free course or you can get an extra year's extension, whatever you like. Okay, um, what do we want to know? Hmm. Uh, we, we talked about recording drums last time. I think I'd be interested to know, um, um, Lisa, I think he means grace notes. Um, uh, sometimes people call them ghost notes as well. I would call them grace notes, but uh, it's the same thing. Um, the... Um, what do we want to know? I think I want to know... Um, well, firstly, you know what? We, we talked about this last time, but let's talk about it again. Have you ever recorded live drums? I think that's it. It's really kind of a, a yes or no question, but I'd like to know if you said yes, you know, is it in your own studio or did you go to another studio? Have you recorded live drums? If you've never recorded live drums, you can still win by saying, no, I've never recorded live drums. But if you have recorded live drums, have you, rec have you only recorded them in another studio or have you done them in your own studio? I'd love to know, basically I want to know about our community is like, do you have your own ability to record live drums? Um, and then please don't forget to hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. I'd really, really appreciate it. So please hit the like button. And this is to win Matt Weiss's uh, recording drums. So what do we do on the overheads? Well, just the EQ. So what do we do on the rim mics? We did a de -esser, first of all, just to capture the extra cymbal bleed. If you did record them, please, please let us know. Um, I'd like to know whether you record them in your own studio or in a studio that you rented. So the rooms have a multiple bunch of things going on. I've got a de -esser. See what it's doing on that symbol, it's beautiful. I'm going to take everything else off and have a listen before and after so you can see why I put it on there. See that? Have a listen. Now let's listen with that in bypass. So it's really nice and controlling the high end, especially that over-the-top cymbal. Now, we did a lot of low, mid-cut and high-passing here to get it out of the way of the kick. So I like what it's doing there, but then what I did is I added Reverb 1, and I went for a shortish room, 1.3 seconds, and then you can see here, I just blended 23% of the effect back in. There's a part of me that wants to put like a tiny amount of saturation in here, so you know what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go back to our old friend that we were just using, the Clang Hound. And put a tiny amount of compression in before I go to that reverb and a tiny amount of color. So on the timing here, I'm gonna to go to the shortest time and I'm gonna drive it here. The timbre here, I'm gonna make darker. Now I'm going to add a little compression. Don't like what it's doing here.
OK, I don't like what it's doing here, but I like the idea of what it could be doing. And you're like, what? What are you talking about, Warren? So what I'm going to do... Who, who won, by the way? Leslie Pugh, congratulations. And Leslie says yes in his home studio. Uh, 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 uh. Do... Do, 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 do... Um, I think it sounds better, but it doesn't sound better in the context of the mix. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stereo auxiliary here. And a drum sub of the whole thing. So now the whole drums are going through a drum sub. Martin says the sub buzz auxiliary. Yes. Should I use the J37? I could. I think what I'm going to do is a couple of things. I'm just going to. But you see what we've done here is we've created a drum mix from the ground up. We're not working backwards. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people teaching is the working backwards. No professionals work backwards. We don't sit there and go, oh, I'm going to create this drum bus and like put lots of compression and EQ and feed everything into it. It's not the way to work. You need to get there and individually build your drum sound so it sounds amazing. Then bust it together and see what you need to add. Don't work backwards. I see all of this top-down mixing stuff, and I love some of these guys. I think they're really, really helpful helping people out. However, they're not going to give you the drum sound you want working that way. You've got to build it from the ground up. Solve the problems incrementally, and then when you get to the master bus, or the drum bus in this case, you can make it sound amazing. So um, what I'm going to do, and, and you, but don't get me wrong, at any point you can change your mind and change the way you do things. That's the thing, not to be too precious. Don't get too precious in how you do things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab um, just an overall EQ. Um, and I think because we don't have any allegiance to any one particular company, we're just going to go and grab something we like. So here's a DBX160. Um, this is actually the Waves one, which I have not yet used on drums. I'm going to have a quick listen. Now there's a rule with the 160. If the meter's if the meter's moving, it's compressing too much. I know it sounds funny, but look, if I go back to the default where it was, it says it's doing like two to three dB worth of compression, but listen to how aggressive it is. There it's reading about two or three, but listen to how aggressive. See, I like the idea of that. I think that could be really good, possibly on a parallel drum compressor. However, if I did a drum parallel drum compression, I might take it from other outputs. Hmm. You might, you're going, what? OK, so let's get rid of that a second. So with that thinking, I'm going to do something a little radical here. Before we do anything else, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go and take the kick and the snare and the toms only. And I am going to 
see if we can so what I've done what I've done is I'm making that do, 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 do. I'm making just these three. It's, I'm trying to think of which ones. Yeah, I'm going to make just these outputs go. So what I'm doing is I'm sending the kick, the snare, and the toms only to, and I could have done this in one go. I'm just talking while I'm doing it slowly. You could actually highlight all, all of them and do it in one go. So now these are going to their own group. So... I've got another group, so I've double outputted. it. So let's just do, let's create another stereo group here. And we'll call this uh, parallel. Sometimes I'll just um, parallel drums. Sometimes I'll just put the kick and snare in, believe it or not. But this instance, I'm going to throw the toms in for the heck of it. And I might take them out. Don't be afraid, like I said, don't be afraid to change your mind, change your ideas, but I'm not putting the rooms and the overheads in there because there's already going to be enough bleed coming from the cymbals and everything else, coming through the uh, toms. So why would I, why do I need to like put all the cymbals and stuff in there? Because listen, once I get aggressive on it, it's going to start going shh, shh, shh. So let's have a listen. See all that cymbal bleed coming out there? To decide a couple of things. Do I want those toms in there? Does it bother me that there's a hum of the toms? Do I want to automate those tom hits? All of these are questions that, you know, I could do. What I think I'm going to do initially is actually take the toms out. So I'm just going to, uh, 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 oh, did it wrong. So I was too busy talking and not concentrating. So what I'm going to do is just put these in, only put them in the main group for the time being. And I love just doing this experiment. So now we've just got the kick and the snare in our parallel group. Let's have a listen. Now, I've never used this before, so I've never used this noise control. I don't know, let's see what it does. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it's bringing up all of that, that sort of symbol stuff, but it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. It's a little dark. It gets a little dark. That's kind of a characteristic of a 160. It starts to sort of like get super, super warm. However, I'm going to use it as a little weapon. So I'm going to bring, turn it off. I'm going to put all of the drums back in, and I'm going to blend and see what we got. So this is a one drum sub completely clean, and then just a kick and snare going through this destroyed 160. And I'll start bringing it up and see what we've got.
I do like it. I do like it. Um, I think uh, I think I want to just cut a little bit of low mids out of both of these drum subs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab um, a favorite EQ of mine. Um, and that is just typically when I don't always use stock EQs, I'll go, my idea of a stock EQ is probably an REQ. It's just something I've grown up using and I know really well. So I'm just going to grab, grab 350 there and just pull out a little bit out of the main drums. Let's hear a before and after. Have a listen. Now, it helps a lot. One of the things that starts to happen um, with... Um, one of the things that starts to happen with um, kicks when you start really boosting some of that sort of, you know, thump down there is you're also getting a little bit of 80 to 100, which is OK, but might start stepping on your bass guitar. So as a little bit of a precaution to that, what I'm going to do here is use go to Andrew's plugin on there and then hit the insert and then go and grab a REQ. So I'm putting this REQ on the end of Andrew's plugin. So I'm going to get I'm going to get a little bit of 80 here. In fact, actually, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to get a little bit of 80 here, actually, a little bit. Whoops. Um, there it is. Sorry, my fault. User error. I'm actually going to get a little bit of like at the end, I don't know, 20 around here and high pass just a little bit, low cut. Then I'm going to pull out a little bit of 80 like this. And you might think this is a little redundant, but this is good for, uh, what, for what's going to happen with our bass. I'm also going to focus the 60 a little bit. So let's just do a little bit of 60 here, but with a dip at 80. And then for schnitz and schniggles, I'm going to do 110. And I know this all seems very incremental, but trust me, it's going to help our bass. So just pulling out a little bit. So you see what's going on here. This is tiny amounts of EQ, but have a listen to what it's doing. So we've still got the ooh on that kick, but it's not quite so it's not quite so thick. We just de-thickened it a little bit. Very subtle things. And at the moment, you might not fully understand what it's going to do, but in the contents of adding a bass guitar in there, it's going to be fantastic. So I'm going to copy this EQ, which is basically a 350 wide 350 cut, down onto my parallel here, so I have the same EQ cut. Okay, so I'm not afraid to do a couple more little things. What could that be? I'm going to add a I'm going to add another reverb just to the snare, just to the snare itself. So again, so let's go and grab um, another input 5 and 6. I love doing all of this just to make the drums huge because it, it's a big rock song, but I don't want it to be metal, but I want it to be a natural drum sound, you know, and Again, remember, we're mimicking a lot of what's going on with those expensive mics where things are getting messed up by, you know, transformers and extra harmonics and tubes and stuff like that. And I'm doing subtle things. There's still not a huge amount. I've opened up people's drum mixes with like seven plugins on every single instrument. So please don't be afraid. So five and six. At the moment, I'm only sending this through our main bus. And I'm just going to add, well, first thing, I'm going to grab an EQ. And I'm going to do, you probably know what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the Abbey Road technique. So this is the Abbey Road technique going into a reverb. So it's going to be all about the mid-range. So we're about 400 hertz and about 5 or 6K. 
which is pretty typical. I'm actually going to go up a bit about to about 500. So I've now shaped the EQ going into the snare reverb. And now let's grab the reverb and we'll go back and use the, what can we use? We can use the free one again. The, let's go and use reverb one. Keeping this really basic. And I'm going to start at, I don't know, I like 750, 700, you know, 800, something like that. It is on 100% wet. I feel like the snare could use a little bit more brightness, so I'm just going to brighten it up there. This is what starts to happen is mix gets more dense. You start, you know, and you're hearing it in context. Now it feels like the snare needs to be brighter still. I'm going to go back here and grab an REQ6. Now, unfortunately, it didn't save my settings like it would have, um, like it would have if, um, like it would have if it had been on another th on a regular channel. But schnizzle happens. So why did I do this? Well, I want to add a little bit more click using this REQ. So we've gone and we're redoing that EQ setting here. So we're ducking. So we're not listening in solo to the drums anymore. We're just sitting there like applying EQ in the context of the whole drum mix. So that, that kind of, that mid-range, high mid-range boost really just kind of brought out the, a little bit of a click on the kick. And that's enough for me. Okay, so now we have parallel drums. We have uh, going on the 160 blended in. We have an identical EQ of a little bit of 350 cut over the whole thing. So these are important things to remember. The snare soloed is pretty bright, but once it was done into the kit, it felt like it needed to be brighter still. Once you start, you know, once I brought the parallel in, which darkened it up a little bit, because that's kind of the characteristic of a 160, I had to combat and bring it up a little brighter. This is part of the incremental work where you're always listening to what you do. See, for me, it's like if I created a drum bus first, how would I know how to blend my parallel that I'm creating with that? And the thing is, is there's no rules. So what I might often do now, quite frankly, is take these two here and send them to one. Um, and again, I haven't really got that aggressive on it yet. I could get even crazier, but we're trying to sort of keep this, you know, somewhat natural sounding, but aggressive drum sound. So what I'm doing is I'm doing an overall drums here. So we'll call this drums, bus, all. And this is those two elements now blended into one. 
And what I would often do is just take a little tiny, quite something gentle, um, which frankly, um, when it comes to waves, has always been my go-to, has always been, um, do, 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 where is it? Dum, 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 dum. We haven't used anything really expensive yet. We've been avoiding doing all of the incredibly expensive things. Um, uh, 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 well, an L2 is going to come, uh, come to life in a minute. Somebody was, um, was asking about the J37. So let's have a listen. Let's do it. put that J37 on the parallel for, for schnitz and schniggles. I don't know if I would put it on my main one. You know, I'm doing too much. I'm, I'm always a little like with the global stuff, I want to get to make sure I'm not just like putting a sledgehammer on it. You know, I want everything to be built up beautifully before it hits the master bus. You know, it comes from that sort of time when you on the master bus, you would have an SSL bus compressor and maybe a Poltec doing a little boom and fizz on the EQ. And that was 90% of the records that we grew up listening to and loved. The same things with Neve. Everything was done incrementally on the way in on different stuff. There's a sort of a move towards make mixing easy by just slamming tons of stuff on the mix bus or the master bus and then mix into it. The problem is, is that really is counterproductive and it doesn't give us the space and we end up with those mixes where everybody complains everything sounds flat. So what I want to do here is probably just go something a little subtler. Um, one of the things that always came free with, um, with, with, um, with Pro Tools that I didn't actually mind was their Fairchild emulation. So let's do a little bit of that. So typically I've used that quite a lot. Um, again, lots of symbols going on. We'll bring down those, um, we'll bring down the rooms a little bit and we're going to bring down the overheads a little bit. It is super aggressive at the end there, but we'll get to that in one second. Then the next thing I would typically do in a situation like this is get our old friend, Mr. L2. Um, this is the last thing in our chain. Now, there's a link control here. What I would normally do is make sure I bring the output down to at least minus one so it's not clipping on the way out, and then... I like the energy now that we're getting from it. Um, yeah, that, that Bomb Factory 670, it may not be the world's most accurate Fairchild, but I like what it does. It's, it doesn't have as much color as you would expect. I think if I was using UAD in this situation, which we are installing in our other studio, what I would do there is I would go and use, um, you know, um, probably use the Manly Verimu. 
Um, I'm excited to try that out because that's a big favorite of mine in these situations. So, you know, watch out for those because when I do those streaming using using other plugins, we'll be able to like really kind of see what's going on. But yeah, the 670 there is working great. Ah, yes, please hit the like button. 326 people watching. Thank you ever so much. OK, so it's 1130. Um, it's 11.30, a time for another giveaway. So this is to win uh, Matt Weiss's, a free copy of Matt Weiss's um, mixing drum, I'm sorry, recording drums. And Matt did a full recording drum seminar and you can win a copy of it. And if you stick around for another half an hour at the end, we'll also do a free year's membership to the Academy. And also, if you are a member of the Academy already, you can um, get a free course or a free year's extension. OK, so what do I want to know? Uh, we've asked about recording drums and whether you've recorded drums in your own studio or have never recorded drums or you've been to another studio. I think my next thing is, is like if you don't record drums or you are using, more importantly, some kind of uh, drum program, what do you use? Do you use Easy Drummer? Do you use Addictive? Do you use Superior? Do you use Slate? What do you use? Or what have you used in the past? And if you've never used any of those, then just say I've never used a drum program. But I'd love to know what drum program do you use? And uh, marvellous. Yes, it's 11.28, close enough to 11.30. OK, so what do you use or what have you used? Oh, and please hit that like. Please hit the like. Um, that would be fantastic. 331 people watching. That's amazing. Please hit that like. OK, so what we're going to do just for a bonus round here is we're going to do a little bit of a drum, uh, a bass mix, just a little bit. And the reason why we're going to do that is just so we can get a little bit of a bounce. So at the moment, the bass sound is just the DI and the bass amp thrown up together. So let's just solo the uh, bass just for a second. And let's listen to the DI. Cool. There's a lot of personality on that DI, but let's have a listen to the amp. There's a, dot, there's a lot more on that. Have a listen. Yes, two things. It's Tony Franklin, and yes, it is a fretless bass. 
Um, it's pretty insane. For a song that's got like sections of 7-4 and all kinds of craziness, yep, yeah, it's a fretless bass. So what have I decided? Well, I've decided that the FET U47 on a bass amp with being driven hard is where I need all my personality. And the Sunset, the DI, Sunset's own DI is where I want all of the low end. And that's pretty typical for me, but we do need to listen and make that decision and not just do it blindly. So the first thing we're going to do, quite frankly, is just this. We're going to... Uh, low pass at about 200-ish, the bass DI. Let's have a listen. Great. Let's copy that down. And now what we're going to do is high pass. So we're going to turn that off. And now high pass the amp at about 200. We have all of the low end coming from the DI. The DI is cleaner, has less distortion on it, so it gives us a really good solid low end. We don't need two sources, a DI and an amp, fighting each other for the low end. I know I've been talking about this for nearly five years of being online, and I've noticed that everybody's adopting this approach now, but this is really how it works great. So if I want to bring up more low end, I can just push my DI up a little bit. You, but Broad Lee or Bro Broad Lee, you can you can do it by just duplicating the DI and have one DI which is super low end, and then one DI that has the high mids, and then you blend the two together. It's uh, another trick as well because then you can compress the low end independently. So what I've done here is I've got this. What's interesting What's interesting is the DI itself doesn't have the low lows that I want. So I'm a little split because now what I want to do is I'm pulling this over to the amp. So now now I've got the low lows on the amp. So I'm actually a little split. A little split. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take this DI, um, going to shape it really nicely get rid of some of the low lows going into it. And then I'm going to put an R bass on it because I feel like if it's got the low lows that I want, then I'll go for it. If I don't get what I want, then I'm just going to abandon it and try a different approach. I'm not precious. It's like what works the best. We listened to it with the live drums a second ago and now I'm making the adjustments to make it work. Yeah, R bass. Let's with the drums.
So what I'm going to do, the phase is really, really good, but it's slightly, slightly off. Um, the last thing you want to do is flip the phase because then you end up cancelling out almost exactly. But using a little bit of time adjuster, so I'm going to go to the samples here, and I've got 125 samples here, uh, 140... It's never going to be exact 110. That's the reason why we wipe out the low end on one source so there's no cancellation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delay the DI about 110, 120. So let's go to delay and time adjust it. So, um, so you, won't see, you won't hear that much difference because the low has been wiped out of one of the sources. But this is just to make sure that the phase is good. interesting with the slight adjustment the mid range comes up a little bit and then the low end comes up so it's kind of six of one half a dozen the other Dweezil Zappers text to me hello Dweezil so the oil oh, comes down so with that slight movement, just that nudge back, it just gets a bit thicker, just a little bit. So let's now bust those two together. And create a bass sub. Uh, uh, um, so a bass sub. Aux. Oh, bass sub aux bus. Sub bus aux aux bus bus sub. I do that as silliness. Just and the reason why I do that is the joke is is that they are the same thing, and everybody always asks what they are. So I just do all three. Okay, so now let's just uh, uh, um, let's dress. Grab a little bit of gentle compression. Why don't we go to our old friend, Mac DSP. Equal opportunity here. Huge fan of Mac DSP. And let's see what we can get. EQ there was kind of a little bit of compression there. Sorry, was really nice. Let's go and grab. Why don't we grab another Mac DSP thing just because we love them? And you know, the analog channel is one of my favorites. So I'm going to put that at the end, uh, maybe. But you know what I want to do next is just grab some EQ. So let's do some global EQ. So I'm going to uh, the high pass is in here. It's at 20. I'll come up a little bit more so it gets out of the way of the kick because we do have a low note because the bass is detuned. So I'm coming up to about 55 and then I'm going to do a little bit of 80 boost. See and hear what's going on. So remember we ducked out a little bit of that 80 to 100. Just a little bit. Now we're putting it into the bass there, and you see what's going on. It's kind of nice. There's some breathing room in there. Reverb on the Tom's Clay, maybe. I'm not there yet. Yes, bass is lift. Now, I, I personally love about 7, 750. So let's go about 750 here. Now, 
I'm also a big fan of one 1.5k. And then I'm not afraid to come in to about three, four, five K and boost some high mids. But then we don't need, we don't need no, okay. We don't need any high end above that. So that's nice, you could have, oh, the girth came back in, but the mid range and the articulations in there as well. Throwing the drums. Yeah, that's a mono input on the bass. There's no reason to make a stereo. And the global EQ, yeah, this is two elements of the bass now being pushed into one and being EQ'd. Now, I do have one magic plugin that we're going to add. And those of you that follow us know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the MV2. We're about to come up to the last giveaway. So, um, it would be absolutely lovely. Please hit the uh, like and share this. If you could share it, it would be amazing. And don't forget to hit the like button. It does let the wonderful world of YouTube know that people are watching this. <laughs> okay. So the MV2. This is an amazing plugin. <laughs> about it, what I absolutely love, love about this uh, program, this, sorry, this plugin, program plugin, I suppose it is a program, but this plugin is like, listen to those little subtle things that get picked up now. How good was that? God bless Tony, uh, Tony Franklin, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, so look, um, people asking, is this always the, the order I mix thing? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's how I get my bass sound, is variations of that. But if you watch any of the videos I do, whether it be in the Academy, which is obviously each month we do breakdown videos, but just in general, I don't have a one-size-fits-all, but that's definitely a lot of how I work. 
Um, great. I'm just going to throw in some guitar here. clip gain that little guitar part up by the way waves is having a huge sale I'm, I'm, and all of the details as usual to buy it all and my favorite plugins list and everything is all underneath the email uh, underneath the um the video so go down there you can get a deal on all of this stuff um yeah the mv2 is is it's interesting it's I've been talking about it, as you know, for about four years, and now I go to forums, and everybody's like, the MV2, it's amazing. And trust me, it is amazing. It is a... I don't know what the algorithm is. I'm not that smart. All I know is that it fixes a lot of situations for me, and it stops me having to parallel compress things that don't need to be parallel compressed. It's pretty amazing.
So that's from uh, one of our masterclasses. That was a Sunset Sound masterclass. That's uh, Greg D'Angelo on drums, Tony Franklin on bass, and Christian Veo. Vale, I think it was either 19 or 20 at the time playing guitar. Um, so a lot of fun. The guitars actually uh, were recorded um, by Cameron Webb. Cameron Webb came down and recorded guitars. We also had Ulrich Wilde come down and give a seminar. Um, and... Uh, Shelly Yaka. So that's the kind of thing we do. When we do our master classes, we bring in some of the best guys in the world and they come in and talk about recording. They're all very good friends. They're all wonderful people. So, um, you know, I only, we only offer the master classes to Academy members. We don't advertise it. Um, it's just an Academy only thing. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing. But if you're not a member of the Academy, I highly, um, highly suggest you join. Uh, we have seven minutes left and we're going to talk about the last giveaway. So the question is, hmm. What we talked about? We talked about drums, drum recording. Um, you know what? I'm just going to ask a dumb one. Just a really dumb one that has really nothing to do with anything. Um, just because. Um, what is your favorite plugin? What's your favorite plugin? If you only had one plugin, what would it be? What is the one plugin that you could not live without? Let us know. What is it? What is that one plugin? I would love to know what that one, one plugin is. So it's been, this has been absolutely fantastic. And remember, this is to win Matt Weiss, a free copy of his drum recording um, course, and also a one-year membership to the Academy. So this is to do both of those things. Please hit the like button. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, so please hit that like, like button. I see we have 299 likes and we have 362 people watching. So let's get that over 300. That would be amazing. Share it if you can. Um, it's absolutely amazing. I love doing this. So let us know, what is your favorite one plugin? If you had one, what is it? Uh, CLA vocals. Uh, uh, uh. Trying to, ah, there it is. Uh, which EQ, uh, Rick? Um, uh, UAD Lem 76, UAD Neve, um, SSL channel. Sheps Omni, stock compressor Sheps Omni, lots of Sheps Omni, some Fab Filter, more Sheps, more Abbey Road, more Omni, more SSL, uh, SSL G, more Sheps, more Omni, Waves G Channel, Brain Box, BX Console, more Sheps, Omni, wow, Omni, I've got a Slate, we've got Omni, we've got Omni, we've got Slate, we've got Omni, 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 Yowza, SSL Brainworks, Arbus. Omni, 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 Ozone, um, CL, CL2A, Waves, TG12345, that's a good idea, Waves, another Slate VMR, MV2, MV2, Omni, I think Omni's winning by far, wow, yeah, please hit that like button, wow, a Peugeot, you want a Peugeot, a car, a Peugeot car? Uh, more Sheps, SSL, CLA2, Waves, uh, SSL-E, Amplitube, um, great on guitars, T-Rex, we love the T-Rex as well, um, a Fiat, uh, a Novo Dynamo, REQ, another Slate, uh, the Lurson, Omni, Focusrite, UAD, EMT, yeah, a lot of Sheps, um, wow, Sheps, 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 Decapitator, UAD, SSL-E channel, um, a Gibson, <laughs> Fruity Reverb. I'd say Shep's Omni Channel, but the uh, Cubase 10 strip uh, is great. Okay, great. The 110 volt wins. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, okay. Timeless 2 Real EQ. Bark of the Dog. And the winner was Michael Dam Junko. We do offer a, a, a must. Do oh sorry somebody asked us to stream of the masterclass from the beginning to end on all days tickets for the stream go out before the masterclass comes up okay uh, GTR SSL bus Pro Q SSL tones STL tones Omni wow all right we have a couple minutes who is going to be chosen to win Matt you're up okay this has been fantastic this is to win a free copy of Matt Weiss's recording drums. Um, and also, and the winner was Steve Oldfield, and also a year's membership at the Academy, Neutron 3 Advance. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Steve. Wow. So please, please email support at Produce Like a Pro, and you will win a one year's membership at the Academy if you're not already a member. Um, oh, the message was retracted. What happened? What? Who did you retract it? Nope. What happened? 
What happened? Who, uh, what happened? Suspense. Suspense. Suspense is killing me. <laughs> what? What happened? Huh? Back, bring it back. Oh, you just won. It came back. <laughs> you won again. Drums with Matt Weiss and he healing membership. Yeah, you won once, twice, once, once, once. Uh, okay. Thanks, everybody. You've been absolutely marvelous. This has uh, been a lot of fun. It's been a great uh, hour and a half. Um, if you haven't already downloaded those drum tracks, you can. Please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to share. After the video is done, please leave some comments. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, check out yesterday's um, video with Jack Douglas. Have you checked it out? Has everybody seen it? Have you left me a message? It's freaking awesome. Um, so Jack, and there is more coming with Jack. We did a lot. Um, he was so much fun to work with. Um, so thank you everybody that's checked it out, left messages, um, commented it really, really is important um, and wonderful. And there's more coming with Jack that are even more exciting. If you think that one was great, just wait till you see some of the more ones. We just wanted to start off softly, softly with a bit of cheap trick there for you. But a great, great um, interview and talk. So thank you, Jack. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. Have a marvellous time recording and mixing, and we'll see you all again very, very soon.